Death in the Valley. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. Police are searching for a murder suspect who they say attacked three co-workers. The attack took place at an adult-oriented business near Havenhurst and Sadakoy in Van Nuys. On June 1st, 2010, Stephen Clancy Hill, also known by his stage name Steve Driver, attacked several co-workers with a prop samurai sword, attacking several, wounding two, and killing actor Herbert Hin Wong, also known by his stage name Tom Dong, in Van Nuys, California. This is the story of the Samurai Porn Murders, which is not the official name. Oh, my God. This is everything. The Valley, Samurai Swords, porn, the acting, the acting culture, uh, the real acting culture in L.A. gone horribly wrong. I can't wait. This was a subject I wanted to do earlier in the year. Opted not to based Mm -hmm. on the hotbed of Los Angeles, and I just didn't Mm -hmm. feel like getting into something this strange and and sad when L.A. was in such an upheaval. I don't know why I just chose not to put that out into the world, even though I put other things out into the world via this podcast. Sure. I just wasn't feeling it, but I was kind of excited to discuss it. Yeah. Well, it's a new year, new ball game, new weirdness. I'm ready for it. Steven, Steve Driver, Tom, Tom Dong. The stage name, as they would like to be called in an entertainment context, which we are. They were known as mopes. What is a mope? I'm assuming from what I've gathered that Mm -hmm. it's men that kind of hang around and mope around porn studios. Hoping to kind of get work. Whoa, I've never heard this before. I thought it was an acronym, like men on people everywhere. Like, like the I don't know. I don't know what I thought it was. You know, when you think about the porn industry, and it's you think like, oh, this is it's easy. Anyone mm-hmm. could do this. It's really not. And no. and I've have a a history from doing a different podcast where I've interviewed and had conversations with a lot of adult stars, not totally. necessarily about. The sex part of it, because that's pretty, I mean, that's somewhat evident. evident. But personal lives, what it was like, how it affected their relationships and their families and what people thought and, Mm -hmm. you know, what it kind of takes to sustain it. And it's a very difficult industry and you can't just walk in and do it. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, if you're comparing it to, you you know, being an astronaut, maybe, yeah, you have to jump through a lot less hoops. Yeah, I, I think, and again, from my very limited time in sex work and knowing people who worked in porn or, or, you know, worked in the sex industry for a limited time, like, there are things that you don't, and like myself included, what is a mope? I don't know. Like, there are things that you don't consider, and there's a culture around it that's both all enveloping and stigmatizing. And, like, think about all the times that you're in a sexual situation and all the pressure that's put on you to begin with in a personal sexual situation. Now, add a bunch of other people, time and money invested in your performance. Like, it's fucking hard. It's 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 difficult. And when you have people that are on the bottom end of that, the bottom of that ladder, which you think this ladder is already a bottom, you know, depending on people's views mm-hmm. about sex work, the adult movie industry, or, you know, the adult, Ad- adult. industry yeah. in general. It's it's and to be at the bottom of that has got to be it's got to be kind of tough. So you have to be the kind of person that is waiting in the wings, essentially to wait in the wings. Yeah, for sure. And also men specifically in. And again, I want to just acknowledge, sex industry is run by men. For, like any, every type of structure at the top of it in the adult industry. Again, please prove me wrong. I would love to hear that. Is is a man, but. To be a man in porn is like a tier. You don't get paid as much. You're not needed as much. So to be like hangers on to, on a porn set. And again, gay porn's a little bit different too. I don't. We haven't gotten there yet. But that is. You have to be a very specific type of person, like you said, to do that and want to do that and just like show up to do that. I guess full disclosure: if you're uncomfortable 
for some reason with, and that's fine if you are, you know, adult movies, sex work, that's not important to the story. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting into too much detail with that. There's plenty of other strangeness. So just just Mm want to warn people, you know me, like I I keep Mm -hmm. it pretty square. Uh, I'm not a. That's true. Jason does not. He he's not going to give you the dis- dirty details that maybe you desire. Or if come you back don't, next week and you'll get you, some dirty details. If you don't desire them, you're in a good place. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really not integral to the story. But when this gets picked up by news outlets and it, you know it really it really umbrellas like what's going on. So it's, it's, it's part of the story, Mm -hmm. but it's not important to it. And I won't be getting into too much detail. Although I could, there's certain things I probably could get into, but it's not important to the story. So I'm just leaving it out. And that's for you to kind of check out if you want to, but in case your, your sensibilities are wherever they're at, maybe you have Mm -hmm. a new year's resolution that you don't want to hear. Um, no samurai literature. Or... Well, we know samurai stuff will stay. In okay, there. okay. It's very honorable. Well, then, if you are, if you made a resolution that's anti samurai sword, stop listening now. Steve Driver, Tom Dong, mm-hmm. they appeared in several movies together mm-hmm. as mopes, and they oh, were. So you known... appear in the movie as the mope. Yeah, but you, the, the term mope is is not part of the movie itself. And that's just what you are. That's okay. A, like, so you're that's just kinda, an actor in the movie, but you are known as a mope until they, you're like, hey, come over here. Yeah. We, you know, we need you to, whatever we need yeah. you to might be able to do. Cool. Maybe it's something sexual. Maybe it's an extra know, in like a weird scene. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Okay, and, okay. But they were known as the Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker of porn. Again, in, in their circle, okay. small circle. It's not, it wasn't a, a very wide, you know, yeah. not a wide view of No one's of listening them. to this and being like, holy shit, Tom Dong? Yeah. Tell me more. So Tom actually recommends Steve to Ultima DVD, which is where what happens happens. Mm-hmm. And Tom was somebody who was kind of uh, maybe on the up and up because he's an you know, Asian porn actor. Mm-hmm. Not as common. Yeah, I think that's true. So Tom is the one who recommended Steve mm-hmm. to work with Ultima DVD. Mm-hmm. And then it all goes downhill from there. But yeah. we have to go back a little bit yeah. with Steve and Clancy Hill, Steve Driver. And we'll go back to 1998. Steve Driver was arrested. Again, he's Stephen Hill at this point. Mm-hmm. He was arrested and charged with assault with a handgun as a student at the University of Maryland, he threatened a teacher's assistant who refused to give him an A on a test he didn't take. Ooh. It's not only like, "Hey, I deserve an A." He's like, "I didn't even take the test. Yeah. I don't. I don't just want a passing grade." Yeah, I didn't get an eighty-nine percent, and I want those two points to get into the A range. He literally didn't show up. And and you find with with Steve Driver is that he has a, a long history of issues that have remained kind of unchecked and unfortunately it comes to a very very huge boil uh, when things start to really unravel for him according to the washington post he asked the instructor what's more important to you giving me an a or your life i mean teacher's like i'll die for the profession for this for this intro to psychology 101 clearly was not a class that you learned much from and so he ended up getting convicted of two lesser charges and sentenced to five years in prison, two suspended, and five years probation. And then that was amended to 18 months, house arrest. So while he's on house arrest, okay, he has a lot of downtime, like a lot of us do. Sure. Does he learn how to bake bread? No. Mm-mm. No. So he Does plays- he binge Netflix? No, because Netflix doesn't exist, exist at, this at, point, this point. at this point. What do you think he does – with his many, many hours of downtime. Ooh, watch porno pornography on the intranet. Yes. He spends a lot of time watching porn, which is kind Again, of understandable. Again, kind of, I mean, like, business as usual. I don't know what you've been doing for the past year in quarantine, but... Not strange, but it's it's how you let it kind of control your life. And listen, I've been in a pretty dark place, and I was living in San Diego and right before I moved up here, Mm -hmm. I was just, and you know, it was when you can just watch a lot of, and I was watching so much, but I wasn't even, I was just sitting there like literally because you can, I think it was the idea of you can keep 
clicking. That yeah. nonstop clicking is the very cycle. addictive. It's like that shitty all right news. It's like yeah. YouTube where it's like, oh, they don't want you to stop. They don't make money if you stop watching. Yes. So like porn will be like, but this. And then the pop, I don't, like, they were pop-ups back then. Like you're just like, all right, I'm just, I've been here for like three fucking hours. And it, it, it you could definitely get really caught up in it because it's both, it's, you know, it's very exciting and, and mm-hmm. titillating. But also it's just the constant more more different mm-hmm. more 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 different and I, I can kind of understand how that might fill your head mm-hmm. and it filled his head with like i would like to do this for a living yeah and i think a lot of at least i mean i'm going to speak for myself and my gross disgusting friends who were growing up <laughs> we probably have kind of mentioned that like i think wouldn't everybody this be cool? and you know as time has gone on i was like oh the pressure must be so high for something like this in reality it's mm-hmm. a very very tough job and i've talked to i've talked to male yeah i've talked you, to you a, and you i've talked to whole... one or two male adult stars and then a lot of women and it's 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 work it's, yeah it's not you know it, people talk about it as if it's if it's nothing it's 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 work and it's i think mm-hmm. it's provided it's legal and consensual it's honest totally. work but this was not uh, being under house arrest probably wasn't great no, I also think the the uh, a lot of the politics of porn, like when you watch porn, it like puts the viewer kind of in the center, especially like, you know, like, can't, like, I think that that is a natural thing. If you watch a lot of porn to be like, I could do this. I look like the, the immersiveness of it kind of perpetuates that I think. And again, it's like being a chef where it's like, yeah, chefs make sandwiches at home, but they don't like they're not going to make you a prefix like it's like it's this thing like it seems like an app parallel to me where it's like that's what they do at work it's not like they enjoy it it's work that they enjoy that's why they do it but they're not like if you can make a fucking sandwich at home doesn't mean you can be a fucking you know four michelin star chef i'm hungry and horny so he became reclusive living at home watching a lot of porn he would take out many credit cards, max them out, mm-hmm. buying more pornography. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like, hey, buy this. It's, you know, and I, I, it's a lot of probably cam stuff, I'm assuming, at that point, too. Yeah, which like is, by the minute, kind of. Yeah. Sure, you get, you know, uh, private rooms. And, and I'm just kind of speculating. As me, as somebody, which I've never done that, because I was like, I'm still too cheap to... <laughs> I know. I was always too cheap. I mean, I was like, oh, I'm not taking out my credit card. Mm-hmm. I, I will keep watching this and then realize, I was like, this is too much. I got to, mm-hmm. like, chill out and... Fortunately, I kind of dug myself out of whatever hole I was in, but unfortunately, Steve Driver did not. So when his sentence was over, he worked at a mortgage title industry, uh, but he had a police record, bad credit. Yeah, no shit. Maxed out credit cards. Yeah, it's not just good. Just buying. That is por- not yeah, good. just buying porn. I don't even know if it's like once you buy it, it's kind of like. Is it like food where you're like, well, I already ate that. It's now it's gone. Yeah. Or is it, you know, like, oh, this has provides value over well, and over like again. Well, that's like we were talking about earlier, Tickled, the documentary, if, you've, if you're listening and have watched it, this dude would pay exorbitant amounts of money to watch young athletic men tickle each other. But once he watched the video, that one specific video of these two men, he could never watch it again. So it's just like feeding that like need and that. Fetish. He doesn't like greatest hits. He doesn't no, value no, not that. Not a fan. Not a fan. He just wants new, brand new singles. Brand new, all. exactly. So he had trouble keeping a job for many, many mm-hmm. reasons, and then he decided that he wanted to go to Los Angeles, L.A. And he got his. You know, his father is somewhat involved because he's somebody who's contacted the police, and he's one who's given information. Uh, obviously, I don't know. You know how his hands were tied when it came to. Dealing with him and disciplining him, I imagine mm-hmm. it, was, it was pretty. It was probably pretty tough, mm-hmm. but he seemed to kind of take some, you know, took some ownership and and was involved in in kind of bringing him to justice in some ways. He yeah moved to Los Angeles. Parents set him up in a place in L.A. Can't be easy. A lot of people do it. Yeah, and he said he wanted to be an actor. Hey. Motivation, drive, okay. It's interesting you maxed because out your credit cards. You don't have. You've got a record. You know, what a gift to have supportive parents like that. So this happened in December 2006, okay. which is when I moved around. I moved yeah, to LA from, a few months before. So it was, we all kind of showed up at the same time and we had led different. Pretty different lives. Very different lives that kind of are all intersecting right now. So take wow. that for what you want. This is historic. 
And he wanted said, I want to become an actor. Okay, mm-hmm. that's something people do. And mm-hmm. usually something that's like, I want to be an actor. I want to be on a, in a Marvel movie. Yeah. What, what am I doing actually now? I'm doing, you know, pornography or I'm doing cam work mm-hmm. or, or something like that. But for him, he's like, no, 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 I don't want to do – no, thank you. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I was like, I want to go there to, to get into pornography. And hey, you know, I, I don't know what the background checks are with all of that, but even getting to, you know, more power to you. And his father started to receive mail from Stephen that was startling. Oh, no. He would send pictures of his girlfriends, I'm doing mm, air quotes, to his dad in sexually explicit poses. To his, his father, f- David Hill says, "Father, yeah. and I don't know if his mother's reading it too." And uh, it's- I mean, the most liberal of dads. Uh, why? Why? He also like nobody asked for this. It's just hurting you. It's so I'd be so uncomfortable to. I mean, I, I would avoid that. You know, because I mean, I grew up kind of like in a you know, this is a kind of a latchkey kid who didn't really share his feelings and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, totally. yeah, totally. You know, the that was the American way. So I was like, the last thing I want to do is overshare sh- porno photos with my dad. Yeah. Like, was there a note accompanying it? That's like, hey, dad, how are you? Life in LA is great. Look at the vaginas of these women that you'll never meet. And all, yeah, but also it's like, who knows what connection they had with him yeah. in general. And Are also just- the consent of like sharing photographs. Exactly. Which again, I can't imagine he thought too much about. We talked about mopes. We did. According to LA Weekly, if you want a more official definition, mm-hmm. hangers on who mope around the studios, hoping for a bit role, which if they're lucky, might bring them $50 plus food and the chance to have sex with a real live woman. <laughs> God. Also, why do – the idea that they're moping around, shouldn't they be – like in every other – like we worked in entertainment for many years at this point, a positive attitude and a can-do kind of uh, personality is really what's going to get you further in the industry. But in in porn, you have to be kind of mopey in order to get 50 bucks, Panda Express, and have sex with a real-life woman? I stop at the Panda Express. I was like, <laughs> like and? No, I'll be like, I don't you. need an and. <laughs> Three item combo, <laughs> I'm in. So the average rate is fifty to seventy five dollars, which I mean isn't bad. Mm-mm. But he, Stephen Driver, did not have what it took to be an adult star. Not even take away star, mm-hmm. an well, adult, a working adult, w- actor. A, a working adult actor, which is already probably a pretty tough thing to mm-hmm. be in, and to just really have zero of what it takes when you yeah. want it that bad. Yeah. And that thing, like, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't have what it takes. But there's probably a lot of people that do have what it takes. It's just not a lot of work. Yeah, no, exactly. To Even go with around. all the right tools, like, I can't imagine. The idea, again, what sticks in my mind is him sending pictures of naked women to his father. I can't imagine. I know mopes are mopes because they mope around, that he is cool to work around. I don't think he had an air of, you know, can do. He probably struck everyone as. In a pornographic context, probably fairly creepy. To kind of continue his thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I said I wasn't going to get into too much of the porn thing. This is not super descriptive by any means. But his thing were monster hands. What? I'm imagining like. <laughs> like Hulk hands? I'm imagining Hulk hands. Like he wore Hulk as a like, Kind of like a gimmick. He wore Hulk hands, like monster hands. Okay. And he would kind of work that into the... I get, But that feels antithetical to like, you need your hands free for... You need your hands to be mobile for sex and porn. To have monster hands just kind of batting at people's bodies, that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Just from a completely... completely. I think it's it might fit in that kind of gonzo kind of porno kind of world like that weird i don't know you know some kind of gimmicky whatever everyone's trying to find their way exactly and i'm sure if i saw that in a video i'd be like that's funny he was in a couple of spoofs if you want to get political Mm -hmm. palin erection 2008 Mm. a classic classic he uses monster hands in there though uh he had a feature role as one barack obama what he played Barack – again, were there monster hands involved? I think no. I think those were kind of just regular presidential yeah. hands in just that pr- one. And he struggled in his scenes. Alana Evans, one of his co-stars, said he was 
like a total nerd. Wow. And like a total cool guy. Hmm. I'm going to take a little break. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Support for the following passion comes from Lexus, celebrating the obsessions that drive us to go all in. From enthusiasts of all different spaces. My name is Ashley Yi. I am from Los Angeles, California, and I am a foodie. <laughs> to me, food isn't simply stuff people eat when they're hungry. It's inventive, it's delicious, and I love how food is sort of a catalyst that brings people together. Ashley started posting food photography on social media during college, pioneering the food blogging space by just being herself. Creating something that's interesting, beautiful, and quirky, I think that's what sets you apart. I think as soon as you are going to be yourself unapologetically, that's when people will really resonate with you. And she believes passion is the key to success. Passion creates excitement. I think it's a fuel that really inspires and drives people to their goals. At Lexus, they've gone all in on their passion, designing a pure sports sedan, the new Lexus IS. Designed to look as thrilling as it is to drive. Learn more at Lexus.com slash IS. Hello. Hi. How are you? How's Hello. it going? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How are your resolutions going? Yeah, you're a couple days in. Stopping listening to this podcast, I hope is not one of them. Yeah, really hope so. Really, really, really hope so. Please don't. Yeah, please don't. We we need you more than ever. Yeah. Did you make any resolutions this year? No. No, I'm just continuing to do what I do, you know? <laughs> just kind of, yeah, doing yeah. Yeah, what I do about you. I decided, because I'm a big resolution list maker, like I love stuff like that. I don't keep it often, but there's, aside from having a total nervous breakdown, during the holidays, not to- I mean, that's hyperbolic. I'm fine. I started on the recommendation of a friend, the Deepak Chopra's 21 day meditation challenge. I'm on day three. I feel and it shows. Yeah, you're like, oh, you look deep, <laughs> enlightened, calmed. That's not true. I think maybe there's a carbon monoxide leak in my house. But I, I, I am enjoying it, though. And I feel like that's a good doable. I mean, after the shit show of last year, have you survived? Have you gotten COVID? And have you not spread COVID? Great, good. Just like eat a bunch of cookies and like sleep in. But we hope you're well. We would love you to check out patreon.com slash ghost town pod for oh, bonus episodes, early amazing. access episodes. You know, we had that episode about the photo with the hand. Yeah. And a a listener, Rebecca, it was Rebecca. Rebecca to Rebecca. She she kind of explained it. (gasps) So that's on our Patreon if you want the explanation. Well, I got to get to Patreon. Yeah. So I want to thank her and and for everyone who's who's reached out, anyone who's just listened or supported, anyone who's subscribed to the Patreon, it it, it really helps us out. Totally. We've gotten so many nice messages too over the break. We're really appreciative. It's been tough for me personally, and so it's so nice when you guys reach out. It makes me feel amazing, honestly. We're t- still taking a bit of a hit on Apple Podcasts. Oof. We've definitely fallen below the 4.0 mark. So if oh, you haven't boy. listened, rated, and reviewed, and you would like to, it would be, it would help us. It's just an easy way for you know people to see it and not think we're, I guess, terrible people and, and yeah. stuff like that. Putting out a terrible product. The, and we want to say hello to our government. Hello. Hello to our mayors. We have Brandon Gaddis. We have Ashley Matson. We have Ben Forsyth. Mm-hmm. We have our governor, Chris Witt. Hello. We hope everyone is doing well. Yeah. Also, I want to say, I think there's a, a pin on that side. Can you open that drawer? Or, there's a desk that we record this on, and there's a drawer inside with perhaps an envelope. Yes. Okay. If you are Alexa and you're a Patreon subscriber, we have a pin for you. So send us your info. Yeah. So we, we want to give you thing. We want to give you all things. So check it out. Hit us up. And if you could check out youtube.com slash Jason Horton, mm-hmm. give it a subscribe, watch a video, hit a thumbs up, leave a comment. It helps the algorithm. It's yeah. all in service of the algorithm. Yeah. I also just bought one of your shirts on Amazon.com yeah. if you've heard of it. Yeah. I'll link it in the thing below. There's it's very thing. cool. I haven't gotten it yet, but I'm excited to get it. Check it out. Just, it all helps. Yeah. It all helps. Speaking of help, mm-hmm. that unfortunately didn't go well. Oh. Let's get back into the story of Steve Driver, Tom Dong, and what I call the samurai porn murders. <laughs> 
<laughs> don't know what else to call it. I know, because it's, it's like, uh, conceptually, I'm like, oh, samurai porn murders. And then, of course, no, it's, it's we've a, been it's, going down a sad road with it's this a, story. It's, it's, a sad, it's a sad story. And, you know, people have, especially lately, when, you know, the book came out, like, oh, what, what do you think it is about Los Angeles? And I was like, it's inherently has a lot of desperation, mm-hmm. rejection, sadness. And people come here for that, yeah. essentially. And it's just all like bottled up and then sometimes it bubbles over or whatever so it, it's it's you know and the adult industry in its in its own way it historically has been pushed back on you know where it's mm-hmm. something that's literally the worst thing you could do for people that are just working and there's other things that are that are actually criminal that people are like well it's you know at least you're not doing porn and it's it's a terrible stigma and yeah this is really just a, a sad story that will get sadder and the sadness was televised mm. yes so herbert lin wong tom dong mm-hmm. was more successful in his mopedom mm-hmm. he befriended steve and recommended him to ultima dvd he got some money he got a room and board because he had nowhere to stay and he lived in the production studio in van nuys california van nuys we're no stranger to van nuys oh no. A lot of, you know, almost lived there a few times. And, yeah. Uh, well, I think Van Nuys is, is great, but, you know, you kind of reference Van Nuys when you're like, where can I live in Los Angeles that's the most affordable? Mm-hmm. I always say Van Nuys yeah. for some reason. I mean, it's Van Nuys of- is not Los Angeles, too. It is literally the city of Van Nuys. It's the sprawling outer valley before, you know, Ventura. It is gigantic and a very beautiful in places, but it's it does feel like like – Posts like Burbank is the valley, like North Hollywood is the valley. When you think about studios, they're all in the in the near valley to the rest of Los Angeles. But Van Nuys is like two steps out of that. So it turns out Stephen was not a good fit mm. for the reasons that I've mentioned. He was kind of editing and updating their website, mm-hmm. but he did such a bad job. Like his editing skills, I think his grammar and you know because it's text Mm -hmm. and and photos they ended up having to redo a lot of it so they were trying to find stuff for him to do it it seems like from what i gather that the people at ultima dvd like people were on his side it Mm -hmm. seems like in general people are on his side he also notoriously lacked personal hygiene Mm. which is a problem his own worst enemy he was difficult erratic volatile and they eventually let him go and they even offered bunny kind of pain to get rid of him because that's kind of they saw that like this guy is not going to go quietly into that good night yeah no <laughs> and no so they tried to kind of pay take your him monster out. hands pack up your monster hands and go according to la weekly i asked him to call his parents or an old roommate or something that was eric jover j-o-v-e-r jover i'll say eric jover i gave him two weeks and then those two weeks passed then three days before the incident we're going to get to I said, you're going to have to leave or I'm going to have the police come and escort you out. So they gave him time, then mm-hmm. gave him time, time. Yeah. Then gave him time, time, time mm-hmm. and offered to give him money, things that they didn't have to do. Yeah. But I think probably they, I don't know, they felt bad. And he was a friend of Tom's, which they liked, you know, they mm-hmm. liked. And that was his recommendation. So a few weeks before that, he was in a disturbing incident on the campus of California California State Northridge, CS Northridge, CS Northridge. Which yeah, listen, we've talked about Northridge, yeah, Northridge, Northridge earthquake, and so he was there because he wanted to use the internet and didn't have internet access on mm-hmm. his own. So he would pose as a student, and he was trying to do it with his monster hands. So oh, it was okay. very difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, like I said, but he probably stood out. Yeah, quite a bit and for sure. How old were is he? Like, at this what point? is up with this dude? Yeah. And his father actually became concerned for the safety of the people on the campus. Oh, that's not a good sign when your dad is like, hey, my kid. And he, I think he was doing this from dangerous. Maryland. Oh. He ended up calling LAPD and said his son was making crazy statements about killing people. According to Stephen's father, I received an email from Stephen in which he threatened suicide, saying if he was going, he was going to take a lot of people with him. Uh, he notified the police immediately and then shortly picked him up at the Northridge campus, where he often t- pretended to be a student to use the computers in the library. When the police found Stephen, mm-hmm. he had a sword in his vehicle mm. and was locked up for 72 hours for a mental evaluation. Yeah, good, good. Wasn't enough time. 
apparently. Mm. On June 1st, 2010, Stephen Hill, Steve Driver, mm-hmm. attacked studio manager Christopher Rochelle, who was trying to persuade him to leave. This is where he's mm-hmm. like, now... Time to go, dude. Yeah, now it's time to go. Herbert Wong, Tim Dong came to help mm-hmm. because he's swinging around a samurai sword yeah. that he sharpened. Ooh. So they're probably – it was a prop. Yeah, you know, exactly. I don't, know if we're, I don't know if it was part of the studio. I don't know if it was his thing because it was in the car. But he had a prop samurai sword and then he sharpened it and he just started attacking. And it's like I'm sure if you're his friend Tim – Tom? Tom. You feel responsible totally and you're like I have to just – And I think he got in there to, to really you know be like, hey, listen, guys – Let's sort this out. Because mm-hmm. who thinks that? No, you know you're going to get killed with a samurai sword. Mm-hmm. And Yuri Drell, who was a neighbor from a nearby business, and both of them were cut with the samurai sword. Mm-hmm. Three victims were rushed to Northridge Hospital, where Wong was pronounced dead. He was he did not survive wow. his stab wounds, cut wounds. He had turned purple. Mm. I was reading. It was like a, a pretty sad, pretty sad event. And then Stephen tried to run down Eric Jover with his car before fleeing. Oh, boy. You think it's over? Mm, I no, hope it is. It's not over. Oh, no. The standoff. So Stephen was on the run for days. And they found him at a West Hills house. West Hills is up mm-hmm. in the valley. He had barricaded himself there, and then he kind of got out of there, and he was standing on a cliff. I'm trying to think of where in West Hills there's video mm-hmm. that I've watched, and I'm trying to understand where this would be. Mm-hmm. It's not a cliff that goes into the water. Like, it doesn't go to the ocean. He's, we're not on the coast. Uh-huh. So I don't know where this cliff – but there are some mountainous areas in the valley. You yeah. know, it can be, and it's not all flat. You know, you can find some areas. And he had the sword – with him and he had it up against his body, you know, kind of threatening suicide. It could be death by cop, as they yeah. say, too. And there was an eight hour standoff. And oh, KTLA boy. was streaming this as it's happening because that is insane. It's an, a pretty insane story. And when there's yeah. a police chase, you know, anywhere, but especially in LA, it's, yeah. it's, if we learned anything from the, you know, OJ, o- o- OJ yeah, Simpson for sure, and, and for many sure. other things. You know, and this people, is 98, 99? This is this 2008. Is, this is 2010. <gasps> 2010. Which I vaguely remember only because I was working on some on YouTube and I I only heard about it because, you know, the, the porn connection, obviously, mm-hmm. and Samurai Sword and Chases. Mm-hmm. So, but at that point, I really wasn't actively like kind of the way I would now kind mm-hmm. of following these things. And, and you know, it wasn't like trending on Twitter for, for me or anything like that at that yeah. point. I don't think the... You know, the social media was as robust and quick as it is now. And there was an eight-hour standoff, and they tried to tase him, but that wasn't working. And he eventually jumped off the cliff to his death, which was 50 feet below, and died from head injuries. Okay, so Oof. I watched the video. I don't mm-hmm. watch these – like, I don't watch morbid things like mm-hmm. found footage or whatever. And I was only watching this just to inform myself – for mm-hmm. this episode and you see it all like you see him up there and then you see him go Ugh. you see him hit the rock so warning if you're somebody that is curious it's tough to look at mm-hmm. but you might be somebody who's like listen this is what i'm i'm interested in the whole story yeah video is is out there it looks like and it, listen, him jumping makes complete and total sense mm-hmm. not odd whatsoever it did look like he slipped a little bit, but I, I mean, again, that was just for me watching it once. Yeah. Either way, it was not going to end. It was going to end one way or another, and it just happened to end like that. There's a movie called Mope that was directed by Lucas Hayne and premiered in January 2019 at Sundance. I think David Arquette is in it. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, this movie kind of brought it back to my attention. So mm-hmm. I wanted to give it a give it a shout out. I have not watched it. Mm-hmm. Because I don't, I feel like if I watch a dramatization of something, it kind of, I'm taking that as the information and not the yeah, information exactly. that's out there. It's tricky. It's it's a tricky line to toe with a dramatization or like a dramatic 
retelling. It's um, a really sad story. Oof. And I've learned that I will work for Panda Express. <laughs> That's right. If you like weird and strange history as much as I do, then I have the podcast for you. I'm Jason Horton, host of Strange Year. Each episode, I break down the strange history and cultural happenings during that year, like 1977, the wow signal, 1963, three tramps theory, 1844, the Millerite movement, 1997, the Phoenix Lights, 1896, the shortest war, 2004, Benjamin Kyle, 1518, the dancing plague, 1985, the move bombing, 1972, remote viewing. So to get your weekly weird history fix, pause the podcast you're listening to right now and subscribe to Strange Year wherever you listen to podcasts.